All right, praise the Lord, my brothers, sisters, and friends. Truly, we want to thank and praise God for blessing us to come back to you once again. We want to thank God for all that he has done and all that he's going to do. We're coming back tonight asking the question, who is right, Pastor Geno Jennings or Elder Kendrick Murray, concerning who will be the judge in the end? All right, let's take our Bibles tonight. We want to answer that question, and let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Who's right? Is it Elder Kendrick Murray or is it Pastor Geno Jennings? Concerning who is the judge and who will be the judge in the end. Is it God the Father or Jesus Christ the Son of God? Who will be the judge? All right, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. We hope you're there. And this is what it says. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. All right, let's go back to verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it. Now, who is him that is sitting on this great white throne. It is God. It is Jesus Christ, God, who is sitting on this great white throne. Jesus Christ is God, but he is not God the Father. This is not God the Father sitting on this throne. This is Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. All right? Sitting on this throne to be the judge. So we see already that Elder Kendrick Murray has the correct information according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ is the one who God the Father has appointed to be the judge. Glory be to God. Now let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Now although I don't agree with Elder Kendrick Murray on many things, I do agree with him on these two things. Number one, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of the Father. Jesus Christ is not the Father, but he is the Son of the Father. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of the Highest. He is not the Highest, but he is the Son of the Highest. All right, and the next thing I agree with Elder Kendrick Murray on, I agree with him that it is Jesus Christ who will judge in the end. It is Jesus Christ who has been appointed to judge. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Now, there are a lot of other things I disagree with Elder Kendrick Murray on because he sat under Geno Jennings and he still has a lot of, of beliefs that Geno Jennings has and I believe and I hope that God will work on him just like he did on him concerning who Jesus Christ is. Now let me say that Geno Jennings does not have salvation. Geno Jennings is not saved. All of those that sit under Geno Jennings and remain under Geno Jennings will go to hell. Geno Jennings will go to hell and everybody that sits under him will go to hell. All right? And I can I can and I can truthfully boldly rightly make that statement. <clears throat> if they don't get from under Geno Jennings and begin and began to believe in Jesus Christ who is the son of God, they will have no salvation and they will be lost. Because Jesus Christ is not the father and if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you have no salvation. You cannot make Jesus Christ the Father and believe that you are saved. Jesus Christ is not the Father. It is the Father who has to draw you to Christ. It is Christ who has to get you to the Father. Jesus said, no man can come to my Father but by me. All right, and Jesus also said that no man can come to me except my Father draws him. So if you have not, if you are not, if you don't believe in the Father to draw you to the Son, 
And the only way you can get to the Son, you got to be drawn by the Father. And the only way you can get to the Father, you got to come by the Son. So if you don't believe there is a Son, and by making the Father the Son, you eradicate or get rid of the Son, which means if you don't have the Son, you don't have any life. Now, it's too many of you out there would rather believe some liar like Geno Jennings, who, cl who claimed to be an apostle, if he were a true apostle, he wouldn't be lying. All right? And he wouldn't, he wouldn't be getting rid of Jesus Christ. He would believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all three of them. He wouldn't be lying and teaching false doctrine and telling people that there is only one person in heaven and that it is the Father who is coming back to judge. Geno Jennings is a liar and a deceiver, and he does not know the word. He does not know how to rightly divide the word. He cannot make a distinction between the Father and the Son. The man is ignorant of the word of God. Hallelujah. So we see in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Now remember, Jesus Christ, if we keep this chapter in context, we see what is happening. All right? We see what Jesus Christ has already done with the devil, with the beast and the false prophet. And we see that Jesus Christ is getting ready to judge and to hand the kingdom back over to God the Father. So this part where it says here, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, is talking about the heaven and the earth passing away or fleeing away or being burnt up to be renovated. All right? Now, when you renovate something, you don't get rid of the foundation of it. See, the earth will never be moved. The earth will not be burnt up, but the things that are in the earth will be burnt up. All right? Hallelujah. So we're going to see a renovation, hallelujah, of the old heaven and earth and see a new heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And that's what we see right here in uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Look at what it says. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So we see the first heaven and the first earth passing away. Why? Because it has been renovated. It has been burnt up, and now it has been renovated and ready for the new heaven and the new earth and God the Father to bring down the great city of New Jerusalem to the earth. Hallelujah. So we see that in verse 11, it is Jesus Christ who is sitting on that great white throne. All right. Now, let's leave there and let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, as we continue to ask the question, who's right, Elder Kendrick Murray or Pastor Geno Jennings concerning who is the judge? Or who will be the judge in the end? Hallelujah. All right. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. <clears throat> this is what it said. It says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye work of iniquity, or ye that work iniquity. All right, now let's go back to verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, what day is that? That is the day of judgment. That is judgment day. All right? Oh, hallelujah. That is the day of of the great white throne judgment. Hallelujah. 
where Jesus Christ is sitting on that throne. So he said, many, Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So this is Jesus Christ judging on that day. All right. Now, in order to get more information and to keep everything in context, I would suggest that you go back and read the whole chapter of uh, Matthew 7. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's leave there and go to um, uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Hallelujah. As we find out who is the one that is sitting on the great white throne. Who is the judge or who will be the judge in the end? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. We hope you have your Bibles and you have turned to Acts chapter 17, verse 31. All right. <clears throat> this is what it says. It says, because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. All right? So we see that uh, if we go back to verse 30, let's read verse 30. It says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commended, I'm sorry, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Verse 31, because he hath appointed a day. Who hath appointed a day? God the Father. See, God the Father hath appointed a day. Well, what day has he appointed? Judgment day. The day that Jesus sits on the white throne judgment. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The day that he sits on the white throne. Hallelujah. That is the day in which God the Father had appointed. Now God the Father is going to judge, but he's going to judge through Jesus Christ. All right? Hallelujah. What we need to understand is that God created the world by Jesus Christ. God saved the world by Jesus Christ. God is going to judge the world by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's understand those three things. Number one, God created the world by Jesus Christ. God saved the world by Jesus Christ. Now, when I say God saved the world, I mean everybody that submits and yields to what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, will be saved. We're not talking about this gospel of inclusion where everybody is automatically saved and everybody is going to heaven despite what the word of God says that you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All right? So we're not talking about being saved that way. We're talking about everybody that put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So God saved the world through Jesus Christ. And God would judge the world through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we see in verse 31, because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man, by that man, Peter Cox, by that man, Geno Jennings, by all of you spiritual dummies out there, hallelujah, that believe that only the Father exists in heaven or believe that Jesus Christ is the Father. No, Jesus Christ is not the Father. He is called the Father, but he is not God the Father. He is the Son of God, hallelujah. So God, because God the Father had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness. Who would judge the world? God the Father. How? By that man. By that man. By that man, Peter Cox. That man is in heaven. He's going to judge by that man. Hallelujah. By that man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. That same man that died is that same man who is in heaven. 
Now he has a different body. He does not have flesh and blood, but he has flesh and bones. All right? Now, we are not going to have flesh and blood. We're going to have flesh and bones, but we're still going to be the same person. Hallelujah. We're going to be in a different body, but we're going to be the same person. So if I'm going to be the same person, if you're going to be the same person, except in a different body, then you are the same person. Hallelujah. And you're going to be identified as the same person. Jesus Christ is the same person. He is the same man. Hallelujah. Son of man, son of God. Hallelujah. Let's don't play on words. Because the question would be, Peter Cox, the question would be, is that the same person who had the same soul who is in heaven now? Is that the same one that died on the cross? Who had the same soul that has the same soul in heaven now? And if your answer would be yes, then that's still the same son of man that's still saying the same son of God. Hallelujah. Or if you say yes, then quit playing on words. Quit trying to act as if you have some uh, revelation from God. Hallelujah. Because that's the same person up there that was down here, except with a different body. Hallelujah. Or a different kind of body, a new body. Hallelujah. But he has the same spirit, the same soul. Hallelujah. Just like you're going to have the same spirit, the same soul, whether you be in heaven or hell. Because that makes up you. Those are two parts that make up you. Plus the body, three parts that make up you. So he said, because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained. Hallelujah. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. So we have the assurance that God raised Jesus from the dead, and we have the assurance, hallelujah, that God through Jesus Christ will judge the quick and the dead. Hallelujah. All right, now let's leave there and let's go to uh, stay in that same book. Back up to Acts chapter 10, verse 42. Acts chapter 10, verse 42. So we already see the evidence in the Bible, according to the scriptures, that Jesus Christ is that man who God has ordained and appointed to be the judge. All right, Acts chapter 10, verse 42. Hallelujah. We hope you have your Bibles and you have turned to Acts chapter 10. Verse 42, and this is what it says. He said, and he had, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, or the quick and dead. All right, let's look at that verse again. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. That's what Apostle Paul said. He commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he, Jesus Christ, which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. So God has ordained him. God has appointed him. All right, now let's run right back. Let's run right back to 1731 again. 17 and 31 again. Let's run to 17 and 31 again and read that again. Hallelujah. All right, 17 and 31. Hallelujah. 17 and 31 says, um, because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained. All right, now we see in Acts 17, 31, uh, God ordained Jesus. All right, and then we went to um, uh, we went to 10, 42. So we see in 17, 31 that God ordained Jesus Christ. 
Then we went to Acts 10, 42. Acts 10, 42. And we read, And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. So he was ordained of God in 1042 to, to be uh, the judge of the quick and dead. And then in um, uh, 17 and um, 31, hallelujah, 1731 again, he was um, ordained of God. Uh, hallelujah. All right. So we see the ordination of Jesus Christ by God the Father to be the judge. Uh, hallelujah. Now let's leave there. Let's go to uh, St. John chapter 5, verse 22. St. John chapter 5, verse 22. So we see that Elder Kendrick Murray is correct on his teaching concerning that Jesus Christ is the judge or will be the judge in the end and not God the Father. Now, Elder Kendrick Murray believes in the both of them. See, I want to give him credit where credit is due. He believes in the both of them, but Geno Jennings does not believe in the both of them. Geno Jennings is deceived, and he has deceived the people who sit under him. All right? Uh, St. John chapter 5, verse 22. This is what it says. It says, For the Father judgeth no man, but had committed all judgment unto the Son. Verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. All right, let's go back to the beginning of verse 22. Because this is what the Bible says. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. See, we believe what the Word says. Hallelujah. God's Word is settled in heaven, and Geno Jennings cannot get up there to change God's Word. Hallelujah. All right? Now, it says in verse 22, For the Father, for the Father judgeth no man. Now, God the Father does not judge no man. What does that mean? Because, Brother Harrison, over there, a few minutes ago, you said that the Father does judge. Well, I told you the Father does judge, but I told you how he judges. He judges through Jesus Christ. Even though the Father gets credit for the judging, it is the Son who does the judging. All right? Why? Because the Father and the Son are one. God is judging. Hallelujah. God is judging. Jesus is God. The Father is God. So God is judging. All right? Hallelujah. That's, you know, just like God raised Jesus from the dead. The Father raised Jesus from the dead. The Son raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Well, who raised Jesus from the dead? The uh, God raised Jesus from the dead. God, the one God raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Because the three are one. Hallelujah. But you can't say... Uh, there is only one. No, there are three in number, but one in spirit, one in unity, one in agreement, one God, three persons. Hallelujah. Remember that scripture says in 2 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three, not one, three that bear record in heaven. Hallelujah. And these three are one. These three are one. The only way you can make take three of something and make it one, you have to unify it. You have to merge it together. Make it one. Hallelujah. So they are one in agreement, one in unity, one in essence, one in nature. All right? So he said, For the Father judges no man, but had committed all judgment unto the Son. So the Father does not sit on the throne and physically judge men or the world. He does it through the Son. Just like he provided salvation through the Son, he's going to judge through the Son. 
Just like he created the world through the Son. Hallelujah. He's going to judge through the Son. Hallelujah. All right, now verse 23. That all men should honor the Son. See, the Bible teaches us and tells us that we should honor the Son. Well, you can't honor the Son, Geno Jennings, if you don't believe in the Son. If you have made the Son the Father. See, if you have made the Son the Father, Geno Jennings, and all of you that fall, uh, 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 fall uh, uh, under the uh, deceit or fall prey to Geno Jennings' deceitfulness, if you have made the Father the Son, or the Son the Father, then you've done away with the Son. All right? And if you do away with the Son, you have no salvation. And if you do away with the Son and make the, the Father the Son, you don't even have a Father. Because the Father can't be made the Son. The Father has to be the Father, and the Son has to be the Son. So really, you don't believe in any... In any uh, you don't believe in any entity. <coughs> you don't believe in God at all. You, there's no way you can have salvation believing that the Father is the Son or the Son is the Father. The Father has to be the Father. The Son has to be the Son. The Holy Spirit has to be the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That all men should honor the Son. Geno Jennings says there is no Son. You don't have to honor the Son. You have to honor who I set up as the Father. Hallelujah. And make that image the Father. And say that that Father or that image is coming back. Hallelujah. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. See, you're supposed to honor Jesus Christ as you honor God the Father which makes a distinction between the two. He that honoreth not the Son, he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. It is the Father who sent the Son. You don't honor the Son, you don't honor the Father. You get no salvation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's leave there and let's skip down to verse 26 and 27. Verses 26 and 27 in the same chapter. Look what it says. It says, And he and hath given him authority. Let's look at verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, See, the Father hath life in himself. So the Father is himself. The Father hath life in himself. The Father is himself. That's one himself. So hath he given the Son to have life in himself. So the Father, it, the Son is himself. The Son hath life in himself. So now we're talking about two himselves or to themselves, all right? The Father is his own self. The Son is his own self. That's two distinct persons. Hallelujah. He said, For the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. Verse 27, and hath given him authority, hath given the Son who hath life in himself. So the Son has a life, and the Father has a life. Glory be to God, hallelujah. And the Father hath given the Son authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. He is the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. Now let's leave there and let's go to um, Romans chapter 2, verse 16. Romans chapter 2, verse 16. And we're going to close this part out and we're going to come back with a conclusion. All right. Romans chapter 2, 
verse 16. Hallelujah. We hope you have your Bibles and you have turned to Romans chapter 2, verse 16. All right, this is what it says. It says, let's look at verse 15. It says, which showed the works of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the means while accusing or excusing one another. All right, now that's talking about the law. Hallelujah. That's talking about various ways that people will be judged. And at some point we can talk about that. Hallelujah. Look at verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now this is what Apostle Paul taught. He taught that in that day, what day is that? That's the day of judgment. Hallelujah. That is the day of the great white throne. Hallelujah. In that day or in the day when God shall judge, how is God going to judge? Is God going to sit on the throne and judge the world himself? No. He's going to judge through who? Jesus Christ. He has appointed, appointed Jesus Christ. All right? In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, all right, God is going to judge. Jesus Christ is God, but God the Father is not going to judge, but through by Jesus Christ. So in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by who? Jesus Christ, according to Apostle Paul's gospel. Now, we rather believe in the real apostle, Apostle Paul, and not that fake apostle, Geno Dennis, who is lying to the people and who have deceived the people. Hallelujah. He has a lying spirit because he is not of God. He's of the devil. He's just like that same false prophet, Tommy Ingram. He's a false prophet and he's lying to the folk, teaching that same damnable gospel because he makes Jesus Christ God the Father and does away with the Father. Well, Tommy Ingram has no salvation either, Neither those that follow him. They are all lost. Hallelujah. All of them are going to hell if they don't get a hold to the real Jesus Christ, the one true Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If they don't preach the true gospel. Hallelujah. All right. Now we're going to stop right there and we're going to come back and pick up and bring the conclusion of the question, who's right, Elder Kendrick Murray, or Pastor Geno Dennis concerning who is the judge or will be the judge in the end. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, until we see you on the next time, God bless. Bye-bye.